this tutorial we're going to use InDesign CC 2020 to go through Class Read a Book Chapter 11, which is all about creating tables. And this is one you're definitely going to have to use in your publications, so pay close attention to what we are creating today. Let's go ahead and take a peek at our end result. If we go in, we look at, we've got our styled table, we've got photos, we've got some alternating patterns, some images. So let's go ahead and get started. Open up our file, our start file, do file save as. Let's do a first initial last name, underscore in design, classroom in a book, chapter 11. Make sure you're in your lesson 11 folder and say save. All right, from here, let's make sure we're in the same workspace. So let's go window, workspace. Let's look at advanced and make sure we're all in advanced. So we should get the same thing. And if we want to, we can do our window, our view, display performance. Let's go ahead and make it high quality nice and crisp and nice looking. All right, so one of the first things we want to do is you see we've got this text that has already been put together for us. So it makes it a lot easier to sometimes have the text before you go ahead and try and create the table itself. So in order to mess with the tables, you've got to use the type tool. So we're going to grab our type tool and we're going to click in the words daily drop in activities and let's control plus so you can see a little bit better. Then I'm going to do an edit and then come down to a select all. It's going to select all that text for me. I want to go to table and I want to do convert text to table. It's going to say, okay, what do you want to do? I want my column separator to be tabs, tabs are those little arrows, and I want my row separators to be paragraphs, so the paragraph marker. Um, my table style is going to be no table style. We're going to go ahead and push OK. It's going to go ahead and create that table for us, which is pretty nice and easy. So let's go ahead and do a control S and save what we've got so far. And let's play with adding and deleting some rows. So let's go ahead and go to this type table and right underneath where we've got daily. Let's go ahead and click in there. Let's go to table. Come down to insert and we want to go ahead and insert a row. And we want to only put one row in. And we want it to go below where we are right now and say OK. It's a very easy way to do that. So now let's add some text. And this first one, let's write activity. Because I have my dynamic spelling on, it's letting me know what's wrong. So day, I'm hit tab to go between, time, and fee. All right, I've got all that. Let's go ahead and do control S and save what we've got so far. Now let's go ahead and select that row with my type tool as long as I go right outside it I'm going to get that arrow so with that arrow I want to go to my type I want to come down here to paragraph styles and we've got a paragraph style called table column heads so we're going to go ahead and put that one in makes it pretty easy and let's go ahead and go down to fee and we're going to add another column because we need a column to put our images into. So let's go table. Let's come down here to insert. And we want to do a column. We want to do one column to the right. And we're going to say OK. Now right now it's going to make it bigger than our page right now. It's OK. We will fix that. Uh, let's do a control S and save what we have so far. So now you see we've got this extra row here at the bottom that we do not want to have. So let's go ahead with our type tool, select that row, and do a table, delete. We want to delete the row, so we got rid of that one row. So now we want to be able to rearrange and do a few things. So maybe we want growing edible flowers to be up. So we can pretty easily take that growing edible flowers, and we can just drag and hold and move it up under trending flowers. So it's pretty easy to rearrange your information in that table with just a drag and drop. Let's do a control S and save what we have. All right, so now let's adjust our column width, row heights, and text placement. So let's go ahead and look. If we use our text tool, we can see we get a double-ended arrow in between uh, to resize the size of those columns. So let's go ahead and play with those. Let's take this activity column out to three and a half inches. And you can tell you're at three and a half. Where is that popping up? It should be right there in my top. All right, so I've got three and a half. Let's take that day column to four and a quarter, so 4.25. 
we want time to go to five and a half. You see we're making these smaller in order to get the fit in our page. Let's take that fee to 6.25. And now our blank image column should come into 7.75. So now we fit within the margins, which is much better. All right, let's go ahead and do window. Let's do type and tables. Let's actually open that table column, the table panel. I'm going to close my paragraph styles for now. All right, so we want to click anywhere in the table. And I'm going to do table. I'm going to do select and table. So it's going to select the whole thing. So now if I look here in my palette, it's going to say, what do you want to adjust? I want to go ahead and adjust the way it's sitting in there. So let's go ahead and make the top cell inset, which is this one right here. Let's go ahead and bump that to 1.25, so it's nice and big. And it would have, it, because we had this center, we had this locked, it changed them all at once. And let's go ahead and change our align center so everything is in the middle. All right, let's go ahead and click anywhere else in the table. It'll go ahead and deselect, and let's do a Control S to save what we have so far. So you can see it's relatively easy to go ahead and play with um, how things are going to lay. Do not add a whole bunch of returns and extra things to try and get it to lay out the way you want to. So now we want to make this drop in activities to be one row. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that row. We're going to go to table, come down here to merge cells, and it's going to go ahead and make that into one cell for us, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and do a control S. So let's go ahead and format our table itself. So let's go ahead with our type tool, click anywhere in our type table. So I'm here in activity. Let's go to table. Let's go to table options. And we want to go ahead and do alternating fills, which is going to create those striped rows for us. All right, so now turn your preview on so you can see what's going to do. And we want to go ahead and choose to do alternating patterning of every other row. So every other row, we want our first row to be black and 20%. We want our next row to be one, just one row and then none. So now every other row has a gray background. And we're going to go ahead and say OK and do a Control S and save what we have so far. So now let's apply some color fills to the cells. Let's go ahead and drop in our daily drop in activities. And let's go to the side and highlight the whole thing. Let's go to Window color. Let's go grab swatches. And in there, let's go ahead and we want our swatch to be the purple instead. And let's make our tint slider, let's make it like 50%. So it's not going to be as dark a purple. So now when we click out, edit, deselect all. No, I didn't do it. All right, let's try this again. Select our row. Select our fill. Oops, that's why. I made the stroke purple instead of the... This is purple. Tint of 50. All right. All right. We want to go ahead and change that stroke to none. What color? Come on. There we go. Nope, not fill to none. This is not going to behave today, is it? All right. So let's grab our stroke color. none. All right. Now we have our purple with no stroke around it, which is what we want. Let's go ahead and grab our type table, our type tool, click in here again. Let's do table, select table. And now we're going to play with our cell strokes. So this one is a little bit goofy. You've got to be able to see this proxy viewer right up here at the top, which is going to tell us where you're going to be laying those lines in. So you see as you click these on and off determines what you're going to be applying those styles to. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we are applying strokes to the horizontal lines. I'm going to make sure I select all three horizontal lines. Oops. So I've got my horizontal lines. And what we really want to do is make the stroke go away. So on the stroke there, we want to go ahead and 
we're going to put zero. So we want zero here. We want no stroke. And we should be able to hit tab. And so now all those strokes went away. Now let's go ahead in our proxy, undo these horizontals. Let's change to the verticals instead. And let's go ahead and make those 0.5. And the black is fine. So now we can do a edit, deselect, and then see what we've got now. So now you see we've got rid of the lines in between the rows, but we still have them between the columns, which is what we want to do. All right, let's do a control S and save. Let's add a border to our table. Let's look, click on our table. Let's go table, select, and table. And let's go ahead and go to table, table options, and we want to go ahead and do table setup. So this is going to give us a few things. Make sure you've got your preview checked so you can see what's going on. All right, with that, we want to go ahead and under table border, which is in the middle, let's make the weight 0.5. Oh, it doesn't want to work. All right, 0.5. Our color, we're just going to leave it be and say OK. So now it's going to add that around. So let's do an edit, deselect all. And you can see now we have that border around. So we can go ahead and see it a little bit better if we go into our preview mode. So you can see how we've got our different borders going on. So let's switch back to normal. Remember, you can always flip back and forth. So the last thing we're going to do is work on adding some graphics to some of those cells. So let's go ahead into that one that says Attracting Butterflies and click in there. We want Table. We want to select the cell. And we want to go ahead and do Table. We want to do Convert Cell to Graphic Cell. So we want to tell it now that it's going to be a graphic. All right, so let's go table. We want to go cell options. And we want to do graphic. So we can position it within the cell. Let's go ahead and turn our preview on. And we want to go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and make it 0 0.0625 all the way around. So we kind of have a play. We can play with it a little bit. And let's say OK. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and put an image in here. So we're going to – oh, it doesn't have us put them in there yet. All right, so first we're going to go to Creating Garden Flags. We're going to make them into cells first. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drag select, so you can just kind of drag over. Try to drag. Drag to the right to select the cell. There we go. Now I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to come down here to Type and Tables. And I want to go ahead and have Table. So I've got my Table style here. And now I want to do my Flyout menu. And let's go ahead and Convert Cell to Graphic Cell. So that's now a graphic. You can tell because it takes the little uh, hashtag out. So now let's go back into our Attracting Butterflies with our text tool. And let's go ahead and do a, let's go in the lower left corner. And let's do a file place. And let's go grab that lesson 11. And that butterfly, say we do not replace, so open. And we're going to go ahead and align it right here with that attracting butterfly cell. I don't like the way it came in there. Oh, okay. It did, it's okay. Let's do an object. Let's go to fitting. And let's go ahead and do fit frame to content. All right. I don't like the way that did that. I'm going to undo it and do it again. I'm going to make sure I'm in my cell. my 
butterfly. File place. Oh, I like how it's doing that. Let's try putting it down here instead. All right, so it did it in that one. I'm not sure what's going on with the others. Let's try one more time. Because it's clearly fitting on top instead of in the cell itself. There we go. Now let's do a file place. Now let's grab my butterfly. I'm not sure what I did differently, but I did it differently. All right, now we're going to do an object. We're going to do fitting. We're going to put frame to content. All right, now we have our butterfly the way it's supposed to be. All right, let's come and go down here to our creating garden flags and select that cell as well. And let's go ahead and do another file place. And go grab those garden flags. Open. Let's place it in there. And we can do a right click here and do fitting and fit frame to content. So it's going to make it bigger again. Now you notice that this one has a inset spacing and this one does not because we only change the spacing on that one. So now you don't always have to uh, make things have a uh, change it to graphic. We can just click here in this uh, flowers one. Let's grab our type tool. In this pending flowers, let's do file place. And let's go ahead and grab that watering can and say open. And let's go ahead and place it in there. It's going to go ahead and fit it in there. And we can use actually our fitting over here. And we can do our fit uh, frame to content right there. So let's do one more with this uh, one more image. File place. And let's go ahead and grab our kite. Open. Fit her in there. Then once again, right click, fitting, fit frame to content. It's a little bit easier to do that than it is to mess with trying to drag things and make them fit. Especially tables are a little bit grumpy. All right, so we've got our table open. I'm going to close my swatches for now. Take my type tool. I'm going to click in my type. And now we want to adjust the row type. So we want to go over that first body row. So we want the one that says... Uh, we want okay we want from activities down to making and flying kites because we want to make those all the same no we don't we want to make them smaller let's do attracting butterflies through kites all right let's go ahead and go into our table and where it says at least right here we want to go and make it exactly we want it to be exactly one inch I'm going to hit tab and it's going to make them all now the same. And we're going to fill our thing. So let's do a control S and save what we have. So next thing we want to do is move this little leaf into some of our things. So let's do a, let's click out so we don't have anything selected. Let's go grab our selection tool and grab that leaf. And do a edit and cut. We're going to cut it off there. We're going to move it in somewhere else. We're going to come in here to Illustrating Botanicals. So let's grab our type tool, come into Illustrating Botanicals, and do a edit paste. So it's going to go ahead and put that in there. And we're going to go ahead and put it in the making and flying kites as well. So we're going to control V and paste that as well. So I'm going to do control S and save what we have. So you can go ahead and um, anchor those graphics in those table cells. So let's go ahead and make a header row. So we're going to choose our activity as our header row. And we want to go ahead and do table, convert rows, down here. Oh, doesn't have it selected. Okay, let's try again. Table, convert rows. It doesn't want to do it. All right, what am I doing wrong? All right, so I've got my type tool. I'm in my type, selecting my activity row. Oh, it wants both rows. Okay, so let's select and do this one at the same time too. 
So shift and grab that daily. Now let's go treble, convert rows, and make them to a header. So because it was the second one, it wouldn't do as a header. That's what happened. All right, so we are now telling it that that is a header. Now what is, why does that matter? So if you have multiple pages, you want that to repeat. So let's go ahead and make this multiple pages. Let's click in your um, making kites. Let's go table. Let's do insert, insert rows. Let's go ahead and insert four rows below what we have right now and say OK. So now if I scroll down, I see I've got my new thing. And because these are labeled header, it went ahead and brought, brought in that daily drop-in activities um, and that other header list for us, which makes life a lot easier than having to try and paste it from page to page. Let's do a control S and save what we have. All right, let's go ahead and click in our table. And we want to go ahead and create some table and cell styles. Well, let's go ahead and look at our table styles. And we want to go ahead and make a new table style. So we can go here to our menu, new table style. It's going to say, what do you want to call it? Let's call it activity table. All right. And we don't want it based on anything. And we're going to say OK. And it's now going to appear in our styles menu. So let's go into our window. Now let's see. We want to be in this daily drop in activities. Daily drop in activities. Window, come down to styles, and we want to go ahead and do cell styles. Alright, so cell styles, it's going to say what do you want? We want to head, go ahead and make a new one, which is this cell style right here. So cell style one, we're going to double click it, and we're going to tell it to be table header. Okay, and now we want to do a few other things. So we want to go ahead and from the paragraph style, we want it to be based on table head. You can turn your preview on. And that will apply that to the table head. Let's go ahead and say OK and save what we have, Control S. Now let's apply that to our style. So let's go ahead and click anywhere. And we're going to go ahead and under our table style, we're going to put activity table in. And let's go ahead and choose table, select the row. Let's grab that table cell. Let's go in this activity one and make it activity table. And now let's make activity. Let's go into table header. So see now it's purple, uh, which is what we had before. So let's go ahead and run daytime fee, make that into table header as well, and see now they're all purple. So if I run down here, it looks like one continuous header instead of two separate pieces. So we've gone through quite a bit with working in this uh, tables. You will be creating tables for your publications. So when in doubt, go back and do the uh, thing again to make your life a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and finish up. Do file save as, or file save. Let's go file package. With package, we've got zero errors. Let's go ahead and package it up. Let's make sure that we are in our lesson 11. We've got everything that our folders changed to PKG. And we're going ahead and package. We're going to come over to our Windows Explorer. With our file explorer, I'm going to go ahead and look in my InDesign, my lesson 11. Now I've got my InDesign package right here. If I double click, I've got fonts. I have links. I have my three files. I'm going to back back up, right click, send to compressed file. I'm going to get that zip folder. And that zip folder is the one I'm going to turn in. So this is how you create a table in InDesign.